friends are making themselves all cozy on Geonosis again. We identified some weak points on that Separatist cruiser. And if there's one thing we love, it's weak points. You know the drill. Take those command posts to deploy. What's going on guys, Grand Day, and welcome to my first impressions and opinions of you on the Capital Supremacy update for Star Wars Battlefront 2. Now, this, um, this video, like the, um, last, um, update that we did for Battlefront 2, is going to be split into two videos. So we got the Capital Supremacy game mode and the new reinforcements. I'm going to split it into two videos because otherwise this one's going to drag on for flipping ages. Um, now... What we're going to do is we're going to go over what I liked from um, the new game mode and what I didn't like. But I'm going to try to structure it a little bit differently. We'll see how this goes. So first of all, what I liked. Now, just in a general general overview, the Capital Supremacy game mode is really, really good. I really am enjoying it. It's different. It's the first new like large-scale game mode we've had since launch, which I think... It's not right that it should be like this, but if, now that we've got it, I don't really care. Um, it is a bit irritating and annoying that it's only available for one map, and I really think that for all the time that we've wasted faffing about with, like, doing different things, that EA really should have got f done right from the start. I think this is, we've waited for something that is a bit underwhelming, I think, but I'm, I don't know. I like it as it's a really fun game, and I don't like it because it's only one map and it does get very repetitive after a while. But that's just my general overview. Now, things that are good in a general basis is that um, one of the things that I really like is that um, the capital ship phase is really um, like good and is well like thought out. For and I'll give you basically an example. I thought that um, the capital ship phase was going to be go in and go around and blow things up and hopefully win um, by depleting the, either depleting the enemy's reinforcements or it's going to be like a, like a blast map in um, the capital ship. I thought that's how it was going to go about, but it's not. You've actually got objectives to play. Now, a lot of people turn around and say, you know, that is like, it's very much Galactic Assault in that respect, but... I kind of like it because, like, you've got your areas that you need to, um, like, um, you need to take down, that's where you need to go. Because it's very, I always like Star Wars games that are very scenario based, and what I mean by that is that I like games that, like, if you were to do it in real life, this is what you need to do to take out the control ship. Um, and take out the ship that you're going to do. And I'm also very glad that they did not use the acclimator. Now, when they were showing little, like, concept pictures, I saw a acclimator um, class destroyer and I thought please for the life of me please do not have the capital ship be an acclimator class star destroyer because it's not a st it's not a capital ship it is a transport ship but no they use the venator which I'm very happy about that um, but no it's very well thought out because you and you've got to take out like the reactor cores of the engine rooms um, and you've got to override the doors in order to get to those areas so I think it's really well thought out and the next thing is that the ground map is just the right size and for the amount of players that are in the game. Now, me personally, maybe it's because it's a different map, but the um, the game mode in itself doesn't seem any bigger. The map doesn't seem any bigger for me. It seems smaller than a Galactic Assault map. Um, maybe not... Um, maybe not... Um, uh, maybe more so with, like, Kashyyyk and... Um, like the Death Star or Naboo, where the maps are massive. But they, they, um, EA just promoted it like it was going to be expanded on from the Galactic Assault map that we got originally. But it's not. It's like a slightly more extended blast map, the first phase on the ground. Now, the, now, the, um, trick of the trade will be is to see ho hopefully when they bring out new maps, how they compare in comparison with the Galactic Assault maps that we've got and how that works. That will be the, excuse me, that will be the trick of the trade to see how how bigger or smaller they actually are. But they're not, I don't find them more like bigger Galactic Assault maps. I find them more like small, like slightly bigger blast maps personally, which isn't a problem because it just means that, because it's 32 versus 32, yes there is AIs but it's not a problem, but 
you're never like a foot of, you're only like a couple meters away from another enemy which is i think is really really good because it gives you that clone wars immersion to it um, like, the, what I always say about Galactic Assault is that because the maps are so big and it's only 20 versus 20, the maps are so big that you could, I could actually walk around for 10 minutes and not come into a single enemy soldier because of how, like, big the maps are in comparison with how little players are in one game. But this, because the map is smaller, like, 25 versus 25 on Blast is good enough. Like, you've seen me when I'm playing, um... When I'm using the arcade mod um, for Battlefront 2 to record when I'm trying to show off the new heroes in their own light. I use the 25 versus 25 mod because it shows them in a new light. And it also, it makes things much more action packed. And that's what it's like in, um, in Capital Supremacy on the first phase. And even on the second phase because the map, because the, the maps are so small, like especially on the Capital Chips. Because Capital Chips you're often fighting in corridors. Yes, it is a bit of a stalemate, but it's still like... It's like, it's very like one on one and you can still like, you could actually chuck a grenade in the mix and you'd be perfectly fine. Like, and you could get like three kills because they're all grouped together. There's like an actual war is taking place, not just like running around picking people off. That's another thing. With heroes, you've got to actually be very careful with where you go because you're never, like I said, you're never like two feet away from a hero in um, the first phase and even the second phase. So... Whereas in Galactic Assault, you could just run around pick, picking players off. You can't do that in Capital Supremacy because there's always a large group of players in one area because um, the map is so small. Which I think is also really good because you have to, like, tactic around um, where any players are. And you've actually got to be more, like, tactic for Because you can't just go run, it, run in slaying um, clones or droids, depending on which side you're playing on, because you'll die instantly. But you can't run around endlessly picking people off, because there's always going to be somebody to come and sm come and stab you in the back. So I think that's also a really good thing that they've done um, there as well. And something else that I do like on a different bit of a different note, the reinforcement gain through capture point control is also a really, really good idea. And I... I thought, well, how is this going to work? Because the way they described it just didn't seem like it was, like, I maybe it's because I didn't read it properly, but I was reading the community transmission for Capital Supremacy, and I was like, this isn't going to work, I don't think. Or if it is, it's going to be very, like, hard to get used to. But it is one of those typical, um, typical ideas where you hold command posts or hold certain areas and you get reinforcements based off that, which I don't mind. I think that's a really good idea. Um... And then when your gunships come down, the more troopers you have on your gunships, the more reinforcements you gain, which I think is also a really, really good idea um, to try and, like, get... It's more realistic. The thing is with Galactic Assault is it's not very realistic in the sense of how it works. Like, you've actually... Like, the Geonosis um, Galactic Assault match, let's say, that is really realistic because you've got to take your walker, you've got to call the Republic to give them to get them to give you more reinforcements you've got to destroy the hard cells and then you've got to storm um, a command post that can only be captured by ATTEs that is really really good because it's really realistic things like um, things like feed where it's like an MTT on rails it does, it's not very immersive I think it's not very realistic which is slightly a bit of a pain um, because it doesn't add to the realism in it at all um, whereas Geonosis Galactic Assault, you've actually, the ATTs are not on rails, so you can, act, you've actually got to, if you're the Republic, you've got to plot around where you can move to get to your objective quicker. If you're the Separatist, you've got to plot around where you can go to get, to destroy the ATTs quickest. Um, which I think is really, really good, and it's the same with Capital Supremacy, you, it's very, like, immersive, and very, like, realistic of how it would be in an actual war. Now, what are some of the things that I don't particularly like about uh, about Capital Supremacy? One of the fact, one of the thing is, and it's not because of the game; it's because of the people who are playing the game. Nobody knows how to ca how to defend the control points properly, because they all just leave it to AIs. And I'm just going to say I'm guilty of this because I do it. You capture a command post, then you move on to the next, leaving the other one that you just captured undefended. Now, what you often see is you see um com uh, cap command points constantly being switched around between the your side and the enemy's side and that's because people leave the command post go and take it back go and take another one and the people who, the and then another player just goes and takes the command post you've already just taken so nobody knows how to defend it properly which is a bit of a like 
I don't see why it's the case. Maybe it's because of like how separated they are. I don't know, but and I know I'd do it as well. But it's it doesn't like help with immersion at all. And I judge a game based on how it's how immersive it is and how well it's nice to play. This is the reason why I don't play Blast very much because it's it's not very good. Or here, I only play Heroes versus Villains to rank up my heroes. I don't because it's not I don't like that. It's not very immersive. Um, but that but maybe it is because it's um, the they're so separated. Maybe I don't know. But that's just and it's not EA and Dice's fault. It's just people playing it that just don't know how to play it properly, myself included. And another thing, this is something on, on a different note, um, Anakin is way too OP for this game mode. Oh my god, he, if you get a player, you don't even have to be good at playing as Anakin to do, to do this. All you need to do is go into a, play as Anakin, and go into um, a capture point that's being taken by your enemy, charge up your force repulse and let it out and you've literally just got like a 15 kill streak straight off the bat depending on how many are around you it is so annoying the amount of times i've been literally like a pixel away from capturing the command post um on genosis and have just been absolutely blown out of this into the sky by anakin's force repulse ability it's so annoying it's really irritating yet. Uh, I think they really need to change that. If not change like the damage it does, just change the radius that it is. Because I could be, I wouldn't even be near a command post. I'd still be affected by it. It's so annoying, and it, it's not just on the ground. It's in, um, it's in the capital ships as well. Because like I said, the capital ships is very close quarters and like closed corridors. So literally, you could just you could just have Anakin run in into the middle of you and your um, um, team. Just charge up his force repos, let it all go, and you're all dead. It's so annoying. And there isn't any other um, hero or villain on your on the Separatist team to counter that. And it's so annoying. You know, the, you know. yes, the heroes and villains, the villains do get blown away, but it's not, um, like, <laughs> immersive, if that... Like, it's so It's I don't know, it's just really, really irritating and annoying. I don't know, but... Anyway, that's just, I th I mean, EA, EA, DICE have already said that they're going to fix it, and they are going to nerf Anakin, and they are going to um, buff and the BX Commander draw, which I'm going to go to in, my ne in a separate video, but um, uh, I said that they're going, they said that they're going to do that, which I'm, I am quite um, grateful for. And somewhere else, the capital ship map is way too big for the objective points. Now, this is going to sound really stupid, but there's only two actual objectives. There's the door unlock, which you only have to do one unlock in order to unlock both doors, which I think is a bit stupid, but they changed that on um, Thieves, which I didn't like at all, because it's, it's a bit stupid, but anyway. Um, and destroying the two reactor cores. That Why is there not any more, like... Um, any more objectives that you can destroy, like the turbo laser batteries, or, um, you know, or, I don't know, the command ship or something, you know, or take down the shield so your forces can open, for, on the outside can open fire, why is there not any more objectives that you can play, because, like, it's such a large map, and it's so good, and it's so, like, detailed and diverse, you know, even, even, like, the Death Star, let's say, for Galactic Assault. There's three objective points that you've got to... Three or four objective points you've got to try and take down. And... In one Galactic Assault map. And that is really good because... That's the different things that you could possibly take down. You know... What, and also, even though just like two reactors... Why do you have to take down two reactors? Why not take down one reactor and the other objective be a turbo laser? You know, why is that not a thing? Why is that not something that you can do? Because to take down two reactor cores, yes, it is good because there's be two. Re there's a backup reactor and a main reactor on a cruiser, but it's it's not like variety-wise. It's not very good, and also because it's the same on both ships. It's it's just adds to the fact that capital supremacy is going to get really boring really really quickly. I don't know why. I think I think that I haven't got bored of it yet, but I haven't really been grinding it out very much. I mean, I'm playing it a lot on my PC, but. I haven't got bored of it yet, but a lot of people I've been talking to have got really bored of it really, really quickly. So, I don't know. A bit of variety, maybe? I don't know. 
And my last thing that I'm going to go on, the games go on for so long sometimes. This game mode that you're, this game that you're watching at the moment, I recorded on my PC because I was testing out 4K gameplay. Um, recording in 4K on my PC. Um, this game mode, I was recording for 50 odd minutes. This entire clip was 50 minutes ish. I was playing for a good half an hour after I stopped recording. Because what happened was, is if I was recording in 1080p, I would be like, I'll record this entire game mode until it's finished. But um, I was, I'll record this entire game until it's finished. But because I was recording in 4K, I thought I'm really conscious on how much space, how much storage is taken up. So I thought, you know what? At this point, I'll just stop recording. I'll just leave it at that. But I was playing an entire half an hour after it. So that game had actually went off by an hour and 20 minutes. That, you know, that is ridiculous. That's ridiculous one game. I've, I've spoken to people whose games, whose games, but they've been going on for two hours, two and a half hours sometimes. That is so, like... That's way too long. I play, I was playing with you. That game that I was playing, somebody was get, got like a hundred... I played another game. That went on about like an hour and a half. And somebody had like a hundred K points, like score, XP score. And I thought, that is mad. That's the sort of like glitchy things you find with the, um, um, the um, squad spawn glitch. But no, that's actually legitly earned because of how long that game went on for. And also, it wouldn't be half as bad if you got the credit payout at the end, but you don't. You are literally just stuck with, oh yeah, we'll just, um, oh yeah, we'll just, you play for an hour and a half, you get 100k points, and we'll just give you a thousand credits. No thank you, I'm not, I'm not happy with that. It's not good, especially playing that game for that long. Like, I could play an hour and a half worth of Blast and get like 10k credits. That's how stupid it is. But, yeah, so maybe add like a timer on it, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, that is about all we have time for in this um, video here. So there is my good bits and bad bits to it. Um, the good bits I really do like. And um, the bad bits are not like majorly problematic to the game necessarily. It's just it, it doesn't like, it hinders the game in a general basis. But anyway, so um, I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you did enjoy, don't forget to smash that like button and hit that subscribe button for more awesome gaming review content whatever um next video on this will be the um reinforcement review i'm um, just gonna be slightly short because there's not a lot to talk about on the reinforcements but i want to wait until the bx droid um buffers come i think i think i'm gonna leave it till that just to have like a bit more of like an accurate view on it but um anyway so i hope you guys have enjoyed and i shall see you all later bye